giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Best of the West. We got the season kicked off this past weekend with three events in the West with some fast cycles and quick climbs. The scores rose quickly here in week one. We'll cover everything that went down this weekend. Look forward to next week's action and talk about the West's top 10 teams. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Clint Ott. I'm Bryce Croucher. And I'm Aiden Ferrer. All right, so we had two California regionals and one PNW district event here in the West. Aiden, why don't you start us off talking about what went down in the OC? Sure thing, Clint. Well, lots of Californians were juiced for Orange County Regional this past weekend, and with good reason. With top teams like 330 Beach Bots, 973 Gray Bots, 3309 Friar Bots, and 4481 Rembrandts all gunning for the top position. The sheer firepower at this event was sure to bring a good show. After 10 grueling matches, it was longtime favorites 330 who stood on top with a ranking point average of 2.9. Beach Bots picked up the Gray Bots from the number three position and 597 out of 29th to join them on the number one alliance. While strong partnerships like 294 Beach Cities Robotics, 3309, and 3250 Kennedy Robotics took number three and 4481, 5802 Los Temeteros, and 5012 Griffin Gear represented the fourth alliance. While the number one three-digit trio stomped their way to the top, it was the unlikely number two alliance of 4079 Quantum Leap, a team who had never qualified for Worlds, let alone captain an alliance. Longtime Beach Blitz hosts 4276 Surf City Vikings and defending OCR champs 5805 S. Embley required, who would climb through the bracket all the way to the finals. Finals one went in favor of the number one alliance with a score of 73 to 48. And in finals two, the number two alliance unfortunately incurred another yellow card on top of the one they received in the semis, resulting in a score of 90 to zero through the transitive red card. Despite all this, all six teams in the finals qualified for champs as 330, 973, and 50, 597 walked away with California's first blue banners this season. And 4079, 4276, and 5805 finished off their night with silver medals and wild cards. 597's Hall of Fame status added an additional wildcard to the pot with their pre-qualification, and 4481 Rembrandts took home the Engineering Inspiration Award. But with pre-qualification at Detroit Champs last year for the same award on Daily Division, another wildcard was thrown to the mix. The highly coveted Chairman's Award had many contenders, as we alluded to last week, but ultimately, 3309 Friarbots walked away with the award for the fourth time in their 10-year history. Congrats to them, as well as Team 7447 Ronin Robotics, who took not only the highest rookie seed award as captains of the fifth alliance, but the rookie all-star award as well. Hey guys, I just want to throw out a hypothetical out there. So 4040 won the Rembrandts, wins entering inspiration, right? Which is great, because that usually gets them to the chance, but they don't get the money from the NASA grant, Correct. Right. So I don't I, know about that one. I'm pretty no, sure I'm pretty it's sure only US teams. Yep. Really? So I'd like to throw a proposal out there. Why doesn't forty four eighty one then get to pick a team that gets the five thousand dollars? Right? Pick a US team, or maybe if it's even a team at the event that's a US based team. But to me it seems ridiculous that like you know, I get it's it's NASA, right? So it's 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 America, it's the States, whatever. But then let them pick a team to get the five grand. Wouldn't that be the coolest freaking thing ever? That'd, That'd be, be super fun if they could get to do that. I don't know if uh, maybe 4041 might not have control over that, but maybe if the money also went to Rookie All-Star instead, like I don't know if they get money out of the winning the award, but that should probably go somewhere, and ideally Rembrandt has a hand in who it goes to if they can't get the money themselves. Yeah, I think if uh, Rembrandt can't choose, then potentially the judges, maybe there should be a second-place award for it. I don't know. 
But uh, yeah, up here in the Pacific Northwest District, uh, we kicked off with a bang this year at the Mount Vernon District event, as an intense competition showed us that you don't need tall robots to reach high scores. Throughout the qualification rounds, 2910 Jack and the Bot and their fellow vertically challenged robot 5803 Apex were duking it out for the top seed. Both these teams showed off successful level 3 climbs as they achieved 8 and 10 HAB climb ranking points respectively. The two teams were ultimately differentiated in the rankings when they faced off in qual match 56, with Jack and the Bot ending up on top with a final ranking score of 2.75. In alliance selections, Jack and the Bot 930, the Sonic Squirrels, for their first round pick, and picked up 4513, the Circuit Breakers, on the back end of the Serpentine. Apex, on the other hand, went with their mother team and local dynasty, 1983 Skunkwork Robotics, and 4579, the Robo Eagles, to fill out their alliance. The first seed alliance strolled through to the finals without a loss while putting up the event high score of 93 points in the second semifinal match. The second alliance, however, had a tough path to the finals with the semis and qual quarterfinals going to three matches and the third semis match coming down to three points nonetheless. The semis alliance that gave him the trouble was a triple offense alliance, which was an interesting strategy to see. But in the finals, uh, the first final fell in Red's favor with a score of 76 to 40. The Blue Alliance struggled to score under the Circuit Breaker's heavy defense and missed their climbs due to, in part to a piece of cargo on the Level 1 platform. Finals 2 was much closer, but also went to the Red Alliance with a score of 70 to 61. The first district win of the PNW went to 29-10, 29-30, and 45-13, while 26-05 the Sea Monsters won the Engineering Inspiration Award, which was the first culture change award for that team. While first highest honor was taken home by the four-time Chairman's Award winner, 2980, the Whidbey Island Wildcats. All right. Yeah, that was a that was a really great alliance, that, that uh, no, number one alliance on uh, at PNW there. Um, just low goals, fast cycles. That was pretty sweet to see. Um, down at Del Mar, teams battled the wind and the rain to compete in the inaugural event there. The Del Mar Regional, presented by Qualcomm, featured some solid robots from all around the globe. After the qualification matches were all said and done, it was 44-14 High Tide who came out on top of the ranking board in their first ever event. They picked up their side elevator pals 36-47, the Millennium Falcons, and 55-26, the T-Cats from Mexico, to make their runs in the limbs. After posting consistent scores in the upper 60s and 70s in quarters and semis, the number one seed made it to the finals where they matched up against the number three alliance of 2576 Chilean Heart, 4415 Epic Robots, and 399 Eagle Robotics. The number three alliance was able to slow down the number one alliance enough to take the first match, but the side elevator power of High Tide and Millennium Falcons proved too powerful for the third alliance as they took matches two and three to take home the banners. 399 wouldn't walk away empty-handed as they went on to win the Chairman's Award. 2102 Paradox was able to grab the Engineering Inspiration Award. And the only rookie at the event, 7426 Pair of Dice Robotics, walked away with the Rookie All-Star Award. Yo, shout out to the Side Elevator gang out there at, at Del Mar. I know that was pretty hype to watch. Yeah, no, those guys, uh, I mean, they have very similar robots. They're obviously implemented slightly differently, but... Um, Man, seeing both those guys run around the field, flipping the ball up and over, it was that was cool to cool to see. Yeah, yeah. So uh, after all that week one action, we actually get to preview the top ten teams in the West as voted by the FRC Top Twenty Five poll. Um, you guys have a guess on who's number one? I I bet someone probably tried to throw a two fifty four in there, but unfortunately they didn't play <laughs> this week, every, so I don't know. Pretty much every week that happens. Well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll spoil it, team. 330, the Beach Bots, was the West top team, uh, followed by 973, Gray Bots, 2910, Jack and the Bot, PNW getting some love, Bryce, that's good news. Uh, that didn't happen very often last year. Uh, 4414, High Tide, <laughs> High Tide. Uh, came in fourth. 3309, Friar Bots, fifth. 359, the Hawaiian Kids, who had a bit earlier exit, I think, than they were hoping for, but um, they get to play again here coming up this week. 3647, the Millennium Falcons came in seventh. 5803 Apex Robotics was eighth. 
2930, The Sonic Squirrels, also some PNW love, and 1983 mm-hmm. Skunk Works uh, came, rounded out the top 10. So last week we talked about, you know, what we look forward to seeing this season, um, you know, what we expected out of teams here in week one. After this week's matches, how are you guys feeling about the game and uh, what teams have been able to field so far? So I know last week we talked quite a bit about uh, defense and how defense was going to play out. And oh, my Lord, that was incredible to watch. People are saying defense is going to ruin events. No, defense made some events. Um, I think 50-12 in the semis at OCR was probably one of the most hype moments to watch because they were absolutely relentless on 973. I think 973 got as many points scored in the Sandstorm as they did in Teleop after 5012 crossed uh, the field just just to play defense on them and sometimes playing defense on 330 as well. It was insane. Uh, I think if they'd gone a little bit longer, they might have turned things in their favor. Uh, it was a little reckless, though. We saw some instances um, that have been noted on Chief Delphi that may have been violations of, I believe, Rule C8, um, crossing over the mid line and pushing people into the territory when they have a teammate already over there and incurring that foul for the double robots. So things are looking a little dicey with defense in week one, but uh, honestly, shout out to 5012 because this looked like something that was well rehearsed. They were on top of 973 the entire time. It's like you have to go up against that. What do you even do? Right? It was it was brutal. Um, also at OCR, I thought it was pretty cool that 4079 and uh, 4276 partnered up on the second alliance. Neither of them are bad teams whatsoever, but they're not who you expect to take second. So I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of potential here in future events that just it's anybody's game once you're in the top eight. So we'll see how that plays out uh, going into future weeks. Yeah, yeah. Def- definitely. Um, as far as the defense, because I mean, 5012 obviously played really, really tough defense, but I think just across FRC in general, we saw that defense was um, kind of tough for people to deal with overall. Um, 973 did as you know as well as they could there. It was definitely relentless by Griffin. That's Griffin Gear, right? 5012. Uh, Griffin Gear, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and they were you know they've been a well-driven team for a long time, so definitely defense was a huge deal. Mm. And the. Uh, I'd say that not only did it make some events, but it definitely made the first week for me. It was the difference between watching Recycle Rutch and watching 2014. And the other thing I got to say is that, yeah, we saw some penalties on these teams that played defense, but they weren't huge. And when they happened, I felt that they were well-balanced. So I got to say there's a huge shout-out to give to the frc gdc uh coming up with these games making something that plays so well with simple enough rules that teams can understand them going into week one um another thing i really noticed up here in the pnw is the crazy prevalence of swerve drives uh i don't know how this is going to continue into the future weeks probably with our first event having jack and the bot might have had a skewed sample uh size but definitely they should be calling Seattle the Swerve City. We'll see how it goes <laughs> going forward. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, in this game, you know, the I, you know, just watching twenty nine ten, um, you know, they got defended occasionally, but they're so agile and so able to just like swerve over to the other cargo bay or you know back up to the rockets. I mean, you could definitely see how that's gonna that a well driven, well you know controlled swerve definitely can be a big advantage here. Um, And I think, you know, Aiden pointed to 1323 last week when we were talking about things we were looking forward to. um, Kind of, you know, they've had a great swerve for the last couple of years. So um, I think we get to see them coming up this week as well. So we'll see if that trend of swerve drives kind of being able to evade the defense continues. All right. So speaking of week two, um, you know, we're picking things up here. In the West, we've got two PNW events this week, two California regionals, and a regional up in Western Canada. Um, There's a lot more deep space to look forward to this week. So, Bryce, what are we looking at up in the PNW? Well, first off, uh, one of the events that my team has often gone to, the first Oregon event of the season in Wilsonville, promises to be an all-out brawl for the district points, with seven of the 38 teams competing having made the playoffs last year in Houston including 
68-31 AO5 Annex, who did it as a rookie. And favorites going into the event are Air Code Zero, 1425, and 1540, the Flaming Chickens, who have both unveiled impressive looking machines. But 2811 Stormbots and 957 Swarm both had breakout years last year in 2018, and they definitely can't be discounted yet. So we'll have to see what their robots look like next week. Uh, Auburn Mountain View is happening up north in Washington, and it's the first of two Auburn District events in the PNW. We'll be host to 39 teams, including second-time competitors, 1983 Skunk Work Robotics, and highly anticipated 2017 PNW champions, 2046 Bare Metal, as well as 2018 winners, 2557, the Soda Bots. Despite its relative proximity to the Mount Vernon District, this event will likely see a lot of different strategies from last week's PNW showing, due to most of the top teams featuring the ability to reach the top of the rocket, and a much smaller percentage of the field expecting to be running swerve drives. What are we going to see down in California? Well, in Central Valley Regional, uh, it's moving back to its former spot in Week 2, a much-desired logistical shift from the Week 6 event that we saw last year. With some superstar teams like Roebling Division's winners 1072 Harker Robotics and 1323 Madtown Robotics, Newton winners 1678 Citrus Circuits, and their former world champion buddies 1671 Buchanan Bird Brains, as well as rising star teams like 701 The Robovikes, 2135 Presentation Invasion, 2854 Prototypes, 5026 Iron Panthers, and 5817 Unirex, we've got one hell of a battle in Fresno this weekend. Out of these 50 teams in attendance, we've also got some new blood with 7413 Plus Ultra out of Pacific Grove, 7589 Lishan Blue Magpie from Taipei, and 7663 Sleuth Robotics. All right. Up in Victoria, British Columbia, the second Canadian Pacific Regional will take place this weekend in a field where over 60% of the teams have competed in less than three seasons. Experienced vets look to press their advantage. When it comes to experience, 359 comes out ahead, having already played this weekend or this past weekend in Del Mar. Fellow Californian 846, the Funky Monkeys look to get their season started off on the right foot, as do two-time Einstein participants, 2122 Team Taters. Other teams I expect to be contenders are 4334 ATA Robotics, and who look to bounce back after kind of a down year last year for them, and 6390 Hephaestus, who won the event last year. Nice. Yeah, 4334. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how they do because they've been they've been pretty good, but they're sometimes a little bit hit or miss. I think last year was one of those years for them. Uh, well, even though some events may change, some still stay the same. And San Diego Regional is no exception. Taking place at the Del Mar Fairgrounds, viewers may get hit with a dose of deja vu coming into this week's SoCal event. Del Mar's defending champs, 3647 Millennium Falcons, are going to return to the battleground, this time with teams like 987 High Rollers from Vegas, local teams 1538 The Holy Cows, 2485 Warlords, and 3128 Aluminum Narwhals. 4481 Rembrandts from the Netherlands aren't keen to return home just yet, and in fact are heading from Orange County last weekend to compete again at Del Mar, along with 812 The Midnight Mechanics. We've also got new teams uh, out of uh, 7415 Jaguar Robotics from West Hills, 7441 Lancer Evo from Chula Vista, and 7626 from Taipei, uh, dipping their toes into the first waters in San Diego. Yeah, so that's both uh, 4481 and 359 are playing week one, week two, back to back. That's got to be rough. I it's even... crazy if you can reasonably do back-to-backs like i i commend it my team's trying to do it this year and i'm not looking forward to it yeah yeah it's uh it's definitely tough and and starting off the season that way i mean with no time to iterate between your first and second event you know it's even it's tough to even get a game plan together um going into thursday in this one um but you know best of luck to both of those teams competing and all the teams competing in week two um that's all we have time for tonight guys but um Thanks for everybody. Thanks to everybody for hanging out with us in the chat. If you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all we ask you let others know about the show. If you've got a few bucks to support the show, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are stoked to have you here. On behalf of myself, Bryce, Aiden, and our producer Tyler, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and thank all of our moders- moderators in the chat. Uh, we'll talk to you next week on Best of the West. Stay tuned. The Mexico region recap is up next. Woohoo! All right. Bye-bye.
Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.